Now let's read, the, read together the reading for this Sunday. Truth is one and eternal. Realize one, oneness with it in your deathless self within. The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramansa Yogananda. Last week, we contemplated the well-known story of Marta and Mary. Traditionally, this story has been offered to show the two classic approaches to salvation. The first, through action, and the second, through prayer. The excuse of the Martas of this world has always been the church needs its Martas too. Treatises, moreover, have been written to justify the Marta approach to pity, praising her self-sacrifice as perhaps an even higher demonstration of devotion. Thus, do the unmeditative workers in religion try to justify themselves. Yet the fact remains that Jesus rebucked Martha. Elsewhere, moreover, he spoke of the virtue of feeding the hungry, curing, curing the sick, and housing those who were homeless. It wasn't that he disapproved of serving people. Wrong attitude was the object of his criticism. What he was criticizing was forgetfulness of the true goal of right spiritual action. Good deeds outwardly without inner communion with God will result in good karma but will not bring final freedom from all karma. The path to inner freedom was described by Paramansa Yogananda in these words. Be always calmly active and actively calm. As it is said in the Bhagavad Gita, the second chapter, he who is not shaken by anxiety during times of sorrow, nor elated during times of happiness, who is free from egoic desire and their attendant fear and anger, such an one is of steady discrimination. Do your duty in life. So counsels this great, great scripture elsewhere, but never lose sight of him to whom all actions should be dedicated. Thus, through holy scripture, God has spoken to mankind. Oh, oh. Happy Sunday to everyone. Last week, we have listened to the story, the famous story of, of Marta and Mary. Marta, that would agitate herself of working and taking care of so many things, and Mary, that would sit at the feet of Jesus. Now I would like to um, make to to ask you all. Ask yourself: Are you more uh, towards a Marta? Uh, 
<laughs> I see some hands up here. You are more a Mary. And who is Marta that would like to be Maria? A lot of hands. So, all of us. Let's look at this week. Uh, let's see Mary. We listen a lot about Marta, but not so much about Mary. In the life of Jesus and of his disciples, who was this Maria? Mary. Um, we are inspired by the Guru, by masters, by realized people, but we are also inspired by disi the disciples because their life and their example is closer to us. We are not, not, not realized as saints or masters, but we are disciples in the path of arriving to perfection. So let's look at Mary. Mary. We see her in three moments, in three particular moments. The house of Martha and Maria and their brother Lazarus was at, Be at, was at Bethany. A bit it was in Bethany. It was in a village that was very close to Jerusalem. Uh, almost three kilometers from the f the city, and it was in on the mountains uh, on these olive uh, mountains. That's where the Garden of Gethsemane is. So their house was on the road. While Jesus would go to Jerusalem, he would would go by the house of Martha and Mary, and when he would come back after he would go by the house of Martha, Maria, and Lazarus. Jesus had disciples. He had friends. And he and Jesus had friends that were disciples. And these were also Martha, Maria, and Lazarus. We, f we listen in different moments about them and how much lo Jesus loved this family. The first time that we listen about this family is in the story that we listened yes, last week and also this week. Jesus that comes with his disciples and, and they come at at lunch time or dinner time, and they come. We don't know if they were announced. We did not have phones then. It could be that Jesus sent a disciple to let them to let them know that he was coming because he was sensitive and and also kind. But anyway, all these people come, and Martha is taking care of the kitchen. She's the oldest daughter. She had that responsibility. While her younger sister, Mary, stays in front on the feet of Jesus in, uh, with all the men disciples. And there we see two qualities of Mary. The first was, is her devotion, her love, when there was Jesus, she couldn't see anything else. She couldn't be anywhere else. If Jesus was there in the living room, she was there in the living room, and she had the courage to stay there in the midst of all these men disciples. That was not uh, normal in those days. And we will come back to the story after. The second moment where we see uh, Jesus and his relationship with his family is when Lazarus is gets is sick and dies, and Jesus is not there in that moment. He is uh, far away, many days uh, from of travel from their house, and he listens about this, 
and that Lazarus is very sick and he's dying. So they ask him to come back. And he says, not yet. He will, he will get well. That's what he says to his disciples. And the disciples are very surprised because they know how much Jesus loves this family and how close he is to Lazarus. And then Lazarus dies. And Jesus, at that, that point, comes back, walking towards this town of Bethania. Bethania. Martha, when she listens, that, when she hears that Jesus is coming, she runs towards him and says, Lord, if you would have been here, our brother would not be dead. And Jesus talks to her and is, has, and he says, don't worry, he still lives. And Mar Mary stays home. And the, the Gospel of John says that she is in silence. And we see there as well the contrast between Martha and Mary. Martha is all about action, about doing, about running. This is a very important quality in the life and also in the spiritual life. But Mary does not run. She stays in silence. Then Martha comes back and says, whispering, she says, Sister, the Master is calling you. And then she goes, but not before. She doesn't do anything without the guidance of the Lord. Then she goes, and then the story continues. And so you know all that story that Jesus, with the grace of God, resuscitates Lazarus. Then we come to the third point where Jesus, we see Jesus together with this family. And these are a few days before the Last Supper. A few days before. He comes back because he's going towards Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. Goes by the house and again with his disciples And what do we see this time of about Mar Martha and Mary? Both are nominated in the Gospel of John, 12th chapter. It says, Martha serves the dinner. And this time she doesn't say anything to her daughter, to her sister. At least it does, it's not said. But what does Mar Mary da do? She takes a quantity of, a big quantity of, of a, an, a, an precious uh, oil, very be with a beautiful perfume, and again has the devotion and the courage to come into this living room where Jesus is there with his disciples, She goes in towards Jesus to, to put this oil uh, on Jesus' feet. This is a symbol of, his, of her devotion, of her spiritual courage. And then she dries the feet with her hair. And Jesus says, this story goes on, but then he says about her, she, she, had, conser she, had, kept, she had kept this oil for my death, but he, she has used it now. What do we understand there? All, other than her courage and devotion, we are looking at her, her attunement, 
her intuition, she understood that this was that the death of Jesus was very close, and she wanted to do this act of love still when he was still alive. So if we go back to the first story, Martha is agitated and worried, and there is Mary that is sitting uh, in front of the of the feet of Jesus, absorbing his teachings. I would like to tell you something, a story, a personal story. Not long ago, I was giving an online um, satsang with Indian devotees, and someone asked, Shivani, can you ask us, can you tell us a precious and powerful moment of your life with Swami Krenanda? And the thing that came to me The, I said the m most ecstatic moments and more and the highest moments with for me were when I was sitting uh, in the f near the feet of Swami Krenanda when he was saying when he was giving discourses I would always sit in front of him because I wanted to feel. I wanted to drink, to absorb. And the first days, the first time when at, when I just had just arrived in 1969, when Swami would talk, I would have a little notebook. And with some agitation, just like Marta, I would write all of this because I wanted to understand, I wanted to remember all of what he was sharing. And someone that had already been there for some time told me, Shivani, I want to tell you something. When you are uh, next to the feet of Swami Kriyananda, you don't have to think. Don't take notes. You just have to put your attention on your spiritual eye. and drink his vibrations. Vibrations of truth through the spiritual eye. And I tried. I put down my, my, my notebook. And do you know, I, Swami wrote so many books. He was a channel of divine wisdom. He wrote music. He was a channel of, of beauty. And then and he did so many discourses. He was a channel of truth, pure truth. Not only thoughts, not concepts, but when Swami would talk, he would transmit the experience of that which he was talking about. When he would talk about joy, I could feel joy. He would, when he would talk about, about peace, I could feel an experiment in that moment. It was like being in the truth at an experiential level. These are the memories, the most beautiful memories. And we all can have this experience because Swami has left us an incredible heritage with his books, with his music, and with his discourses. And when we want to absorb from Swami Kriyananda, just like Mary was, abs was absorbing from Jesus, we want to do it with this comprehension, with this understanding that these are not, that the, it's not concepts that transform us. It's not about words. Swami said that his music, that music is so powerful because it goes beyond the mind. 
But also when we listen to his discourses or read his books, we can over go transcend the intellect and absorb the vibrations. It's the vibrations, really, that transform us, not the words, not the philosophy. And we can be transformed by listening one of his discourses, reading a book, or listening to his music. Yogananda said, while he was writing the autobiography, it is so powerful and transformative because he said he had put his he had put his vibration in every word when we read the autobiography and we read a phrase we we try to we must try not to understand what it is being said but to get in in tune with the vibration that are there. This is what Maria was doing. By, by being in silence, by being calm, in her center, restlessness, without restlessness, and by drawing all these transformative vibrations and uh, vibrations of realization. We want to be like Mary. That Does that mean that we want to um, uh, ref um, leave away Ma Ma Martha? No. Uh, Jesus loved Martha. He said many times that Martha was precious to Jesus. What does Yogananda say about how we can uh, keep these in, in ourselves, both Mary and Martha? These are words of Yogananda. Action performed from a center of deep inner stillness is more beneficial, even outwardly, than action performed for its own sake. Many times when we serve, there is a magnetism and energy in what we are doing. Every project has its own magnetism. At one point, we find that we are or find ourselves doing service we find ourselves doing uh, work, not service, to God. The path to inner freedom was described by Paramahansa Yogananda in these words. Be always calmly active and actively calm. Mary and Martha. Martha that is active with Mary, actively calm, uh, calm, calm with active with in in tune and with calmness, in tune with the Lord. What is the error of Marta? It was her attitude that in Sanskrit we call ahankara. Ahankara means ego. She was working in an egoistic way just for the work itself. Ahankara means aham, me, I, kara, act. Oh, I, I act. I can think about doing this. I can do this. This is Martha. Ahankara. Instead of acting as a Mary, centered with attunement, in attunement, with the will of God. Mary was in silence when his brother Lazarus was uh, died. And then she felt the, f the call of, of the Lord. 
duty or not duty, if one tries his utmost to know God first, that is the highest virtue. For no duty can be performed without borrowing the powers of God. Let's we let's try let's let's look for first the reign of the Lord. That's what Jesus says. First, get into the inner communion with the Lord, and then everything else will come. To perform the highest duty of trying to know God is, in preference of performing smaller duties, is all right. But to do material duties in a spiritual environment by forgetting God is senseless, senseless and unpar unpardonable. But to do material duties in a hermitage by thinking of God all the time is no doubt the highest virtue. In other words, every spiritual member of a hermitage must possess both the qualities of Martha and Mary in order to reach perfection. That spiritual aspirant who serves God and man equally receives quickly enlightenment and divine grace. Any truth seeker, where whatever living in a family, whether living in a family or a hermitage, should be able to express the dual nature of Martha and Mary, doing material duties with the thought of God, or doing the spiritual duty of meditating on God alone without being distracted by material duties as the situation called for. Yogananda Ji was a perfect example of this mix of Martha and Mary. He, he did so much. He, he did so many comments on the writings and he did thousands of discourses in cities everywhere. Through internet, you every day, you can ask, you, you can uh, you can receive what Yogananda did that day, in 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 nineteen twenty three, twenty forty six. You can see what how, all the things that he that he did. Swami Kriyananda, an, a perfect example of this this mix of. Martha and Mary, we know everything that he has done, that he did. And he said, I concentrate, I start working s deeply and mu very much. But when I feel that I'm losing my spiritual, uh, my peace, my interior peace, I stop. And then I search for my interior peace and then go on. And Swami Kriyananda gave us this small routine. What can we do when we realize that we are in a Martha's consciousness? We are doing, doing, doing. What does Swami say that we can do at a practical level to find Mary in us? Now I'm going to guide you in this practice. And I ask you to sit down on a chair. Close your eyes. and get into your normal day in the kitchen or in front of the computer and you are there you are very busy taken by what you are doing the energy is, is moving and you are trapped you can't stop what do you do? 
close your eyes and let's do what Swami Kirananda uh, suggested. First of all, take a small mini pause, mini break. You can do it every hour. It's a mini break. Close your eyes and he says, start with some pranayama. Let's do it together. Inhale. Slowly, slowly. Shivani, Shivani. But did you hear that we are going to start finally? We're started. We're going to open in June. Do you know? We're going to open Ananda. You know? We have to do so many things. I'm cooking uh, in the kitchen, but we have to clean all the rooms, sanitize them, everything. That means all the blankets, all the bathrooms, all the pillows, the garden. We have to work on the garden. The guests are coming after so long, and we have to do we have to do it in the right way, with beauty. What are you doing? <laughs> what, what are you doing with everything that we have to do? What are you doing? Namasya. I see you a little bit agitated. I see you worried. Come, bring the chair, please. Sister, it's right. The guests are coming. Our friends are coming. I know they're coming. It's right that we have to sanitize everything. It's the right. This is the law. It's the law that says that. Namasya. It's also very difficult. We Namasya, we have to sanctify this this environment because when people will come they will appreciate this beautiful place the clean place but they will also appreciate the vibrations the peace the tranquility we do not want to create an agitated place a place where we are doing 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 we want to do everything with calmness it's it's right to do, it's right to serve. Do it with me. Now sit down. Let's breathe. Inhale. And exhale. Again, inhale. And exhale. Now, let's bring and affirm and you affirm with me just like our s guide Swami Krenanda teaches together with the breath inhale joy 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 now let's center ourselves one moment with joy of God. Good. Now I can come. <laughs> now I can come and we can work together and serve together. It, this, is, this is how we can put together in our lives the Mary and the Martha not only to render clean and beautiful the environment, but to sanctify ourselves and bring the vibrations, the saintly vibrations in everything we do. Om. Amen. <laughs>